don't even use that no more, but it's something about that tune, man. I wish they bring it back. Um, T-Street Controversy, this is T-Street Controversy Live on March the 14th, 2014. WBO, WBA, IBF, 175-pound champion, Sergey Kovalev, 26-0-1, with 23 KOs, is going to be defending his titles against WBC number one contender for the 175-pound title, Jean Pascal, 29 Two and one with 17 KOs. I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. Yes! So, therefore, I've seen Jean Pascal's and covered Jean Pascal's last six, seven fights. I've seen and covered Sergey Kovalev's last five fights. So, therefore, I have the knowledge. So, what I'm going to say is this Sergey Kovalev is on top of the world. Sergey Kovalev, Jean Pascal, Adana Stevens, Adana Stevenson, and whoever Adana Stevenson fights next is in basically a mini tournament, a mini WBC undisputed tournament. WBC has pretty much been making Al Heyman fighters or forcing Al Heyman fighters to fight outside of Al Heyman fights, basically by throwing purse bids around and allowing um, title holders in other other divisions outside of the WBO. To fight and become mandatories for titles in, in, in other sanctioning bodies. So therefore, the winner of Sergey Kovalev versus um, Jean Pascal on March 14, 2014, 2015, up there in the Bell um, Center in uh, Montreal, that will be for the WBO, WBA Super World, IBF, and the WBC number one contender uh, slot to take on um, to take on um, a, 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 man a mandatory Adonis Stevenson. Now, the Donna Stevenson situation is frustrating because we've seen exactly what he did. He got the money from Al Heyman, he got a little comfortable, and basically he pretty much took some time off. Now when you look at the twenty thirteen he had, you know, even looking at no, even looking at yeah, look at the twenty thirteen he had, because I remember he took off until May. March the, May the twenty fourth was in he fought was when he fought um from far then he fought to Husky. Yeah. So if you look at the twenty thirteen he had, you know, the best year of his career by far, and he won a title, and he was fight of the year. So when it came to, you know, Dmitry Zahutsky fight, a lot of fans wanted him to rush right in there and fight Sergey Kovalev, which he should have, because he had, well, his team had agreed for him to fight Sergey Kovalev on HBO, but Al Heyman signed him and he jumped ship. I can, I can somewhat understand, you know, if he didn't really want to fight him at that point in time. But I'm not saying that Adana Stevenson is a scared, um, afraid of Sergey Kovalev. You know, physically, I just think he knows that Sergey Kovalev or Jean Pascal can beat him, and he's a newly signed Al Heyman fighter. So basically, he went to Al Heyman, or him and Al Heyman met up and pretty much said, Listen, this is what we're going to do for you. We're going to give you these two fights that you should win, and then try to squeeze another one in, and then eventually you're going to have to fight somebody and probably lose. You know, that's just my opinion. And he was actually close to losing to Fanfara and maybe could lose to Fanfara in the future. So when you look at the 175 pound division, for example, you got guys like um, Lucien Boutte, you got uh, Jean Pascal, you got Sergey Kovalev, you got Bernard Hopkins floating around out there. And uh, just those names right there, let's say just those names, right? And uh, Julio Cesar Chavez and um, Junior uh, Fanfara, just those names right there can do some damage. To Adana Stevenson, maybe not, maybe not um, Lucien Butte because we know it's looking like he hits as soft as a feather right now, and also you know, and he used to have some power, or maybe you know he does. I, I don't know, but anyway, I see Butte maybe getting stopped, and that may be the route that Al Heyman wants to go because face it, let me let's face it, he has a big fight right there, a mega fight up there in Canada if he wants to with Adana Stevenson versus Lucien Butte. But the the matter is, you had Jean Pascal out. I'm not, yeah, you had Jean Pascal out there. Adonis Stevenson had Jean Pascal out there, and he was the number one contender for that belt. And what did he do? He fought Dmitry Zahutsky in a fight that could have been made with Jean Pascal. So you know, it's and and that's where it's like, like in the social media age, you know, and then you know, um, covering boxing and watching all these fights, and, you know, talking to people who know the boxers and everything. It's, it's hard. To, to say that, yo, you didn't know how, like, you ducked him, basically, you know? So, when it comes to, you know, the Sergey Kovalev thing, you know, and then the Jean Pascal thing, and then you got Jean Pascal and Sergey Kovalev fighting each other. So, sometime in the future, there's going to have to be, well, sometime in 2015, 
we're going to have to see um, Adonis Stevenson maybe at the very end of the year or sometime in January or maybe February 20, uh, 2016. You know, if he makes it that far, Adonis Stevenson defending his title against Sergey Kovalev or Jean Pascal. So either way, he's in a situation where he's got to fight those guys anyway. And, you know, with these belts, you know, with, with these uh, governing bodies now, they're trying to add some prestige back to the belt and also, you know, make make um, undisputed champions pretty much. And they're also helping as far as not allowing these boxers to continue to, as we call it, duck each other or, you know, cherry pick or fight whoever they want to fight. You know, as long as they're in the top 15 and if they're not in the top 15, you know, other sanctioning bodies can find a way, squeeze them in to get the fight done anyway. But I'm T-Street Controversial, RealCombatMedia.com. I cover every single major fight live. Please subscribe.